I want to show you another useful program. This one also available for free. This is for manipulating images, typically ones that have vector information. So lines, uh, arrows, line drawings, text, things like that can be manipulated a little bit more cleanly in a program like this. Uh, also allows you to dissect sometimes a file like a PDF file. So we'll see this a uh, little bit of use coming from this for the um, image that we saw before the uh, topographic PDF. And it's loading here with maybe a little bit different impression of the layers. This is giving us a few layers. First one that's showing is kind of a, a satellite contour information uh, layer. I'm going to do the uh, window over to the side that allows me to see the layers. And it gives me one layer. That's exciting. Thought I'd get a little more out of that. <laughs> okay, so I can see our topographic lines uh, kind of buried on there. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. See if we can manipulate this and retain our topographic lines. All right. Click over there what happens. All right. I'm going to click there and delete that. I guess I was trying to click away from any lines. We'll see if I succeeded. Uh, that deleted the gray satellite image layer. This is another uh, more of a satellite photograph layer. Click on the same spot, see if that lets me grab it. All right, looks like we got it. We've got down to the lines only, and we can start zooming in here. So again, plus and minus are useful for zooming in. A big, large file, so it's going to give me a little bit of trouble, even on my new computer here. I just want to maybe show you what this is made of at the fine level. Get a coffee, take your time. Okay, so taking a little while to load, uh, it's loading all of these different lines as their own data. Um, maybe we can't click on them individually. Uh, they probably consist of a lot of grouped shapes, which uh, grouping is a whole other topic we could cover some other time. Uh, mostly things came through okay. A few of these, uh, looks like our street labels are sometimes a little funky. Looks like the, the text of this got collapsed together. Same thing here. This is a collapsed bunch of text. So never guaranteed to be 100% accurate when you disassemble a file like this. Uh, what you can do, you could draw on here. Uh, this Bezier curve option allows you to draw new features that are um, vector lines. If I could grab this. Uh, it's snapping right now. So it tells me where it wants to snap to. It's going to try to make lines connect to other lines. I can turn that off uh, over here on the side with the don't snap. So there's a, a full option here. Turn all the snapping off. And then when you turn snapping on, you can uh, turn it on for specific things you want to be able to snap. So I'm just going to unsnap everything and try that line again. Now you notice when I get near to other lines, it doesn't give me any any grief about that. So I can click one place. Oh my goodness. And there we go. Still have an active line. I'll show you another way to do this that's a less intense size file. Uh, so I can click this several times and make a polygon. I'm just going to double click and make a complete shape there. Uh, something I could do on here to alter that line, you can go to um, some tools. All these things have a, a bit of learning to them, but uh, if you want to do any kind of graphical presentation, this is really good stuff to know. So I've drawn a line and I can give it an arrow end if I want to. So indicate a little bit of direction to our transect. So if you wanted to report on the transect that you did, you could grab a map of that location and put a super fancy arrow on there. Uh, could put finer shapes on as you go. 
Let me open up another image that's a little bit less intensive on the old memory there. Okay, so I'm back in Inkscape with a image which is the screen capture that I took previously. And if we zoom in, uh, you'll see that this is not made up of vectors, it's made up of pixels. So Inkscape has a nice ability to combine uh, these kinds of images which are called bitmap uh, with vector data. So I can keep this image in the background and then draw over it using the same tool as before. Uh, you might notice that things are moving a lot faster now. So things are going pretty swiftly here. I can draw my line. I can turn it into an arrow just like I did before. Uh, here's one for thickening that line if you want to. And there's our arrow. Uh, if you wanted to you turn a grid on, a little bit too far in. And the grid you might be able to use to uh, not only plan the places you want to survey, but also map the locations along something like this. And if you've got some patience with me, I'm going to show you that we could actually make a shape that has regularly spaced hash marks on it and uh, manipulate that so that it kind of fits into our location. So I'm going to do a uh, Bezier curve again, draw ourselves a line. Uh, I've got snapping on here. So I'm going to use the grid that's already there and put a point there and then count our way down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Sixteen were the number of quadrats I did in this particular survey. Uh, so I've got another line off to the side. I'm going to switch tools to the arrow. And a nice feature I like is the duplicate feature. So a uh, keyboard shortcut for that, Command D. And it doesn't look like much, but sure enough, under that line is now another line. I grabbed, let me zoom in here. Still taxing the program a little bit. All right, so it's uh, snapping to the grid. And so when I get near the, all right, that's a problem you always run into. I have grabbed the image behind. So I'm gonna let go and use the ever popular undo tool. And that should pull my image back where it was. And we're doing it again. Thank you, friends. All right, we click here, make sure we have our line. There's our line. Let's see if this works. Come, friends. Here we go. All right, I think I messed up something. All right, well, that took a little longer than expected. Uh, what I did was I built this series of lines using the grid feature, and I grouped them together. So I highlighted the different lines and pulled them together into one item. So when I click on it, it highlights the whole thing. Uh, I'm going to click on this a second time, and you'll notice the arrows around this change. So right now I could pull on these arrows and make this uh, extend out into different directions, different sizes. Uh, if I click on it again, it turns these into turning features. So I can grab that and turn it so it's parallel to the line I drew previously. Uh, and then I can, I guess I go back and I can now extend it out so I can make that shape uh, the same length as my arrow I did before. Actually, it's probably probably reasonable to stop about here. Um, so ahead of time, I, I figured out that I had done 16 points along the transect, and so this would be the rough spacing 
uh, if this resolution on the topographic map, it, I don't know if it really tells us as much information as we would like. Uh, let me pause the image. I'm going to do a screen capture of the... Oh, what the heck? Come along with me. Uh, we're going to screen capture on the maps feature. And uh, we can import that as a new layer to the item. All right, so again, just big green here, but now we can pull in the satellite image, uh, zoom in a little bit more, screen capture tool from before, just grab a nice big chunk here, and I'm going to have to put that into desktop, maybe, so there's our screenshot, uh, put that onto the home location. And then I can do, what I'm going to do is an import here. So open would make a whole new file here. I'm going to do import, which is command I, and grab my screenshot, open, embed, and so on. And I might have made them different sizes here. So uh, what I'm going to try, I'm going to try to mess with the opacity. So uh, you can make things a little bit see-through. And so I've got an image that's probably much bigger than we need. Uh, there, I'm to figure out which key I have to hold to make this scale. Nope, <laughs> not that one. Hmm. All right, one more try. Go for broke. All right, there we have it. So on a Mac, I'm holding the control key, uh, and it's now scaling this without um, altering its perspective, so keeping the dimensions, the, the relative proportions the same. Uh, all right, so I got some highway on there. Match up my highway, and then maybe match up my... Wetland. All right, so I can already tell we're going to get a little bit of trouble here. Okay, so my roads are lining up well. Mostly, I don't know if you can see it quite as well as I'm seeing it. Uh, a lot of my roads have lined up here. All right, so I'm going to put the opacity down, um, keep track of Schwager Drive there and Fremont Street, and as I improve, increase the opacity, you'll notice that our road lines should be filling in right over where the road lines were uh, on the topographic image. So I can pull this all the way up to 100%, and then zoom in. So the screen grab that I got uh, shows a smaller portion of the nature preserve than I had on the topographic image. Uh, as a layer here, I can take this layer and put it under the layers I've already drawn. So as the imported image, it came in on the top. Um, if you work with image programs like this, you got to kind of start thinking about layers that you can't, you can't see them as different, but you think about one is on top of the other. Uh, these little shortcuts that I'm highlighting now will alter where my layers are. So I'm going to put this under another layer. So I went one down and it went under the last thing I drew. And if I go down another one, I should get under that arrow as well. So the arrow is kind of optional. Maybe it looks even better without the arrow. Uh, roughly identifies where I was doing my survey. So I think I got the top of the ridge there. That agrees with the topographic map. Uh, stopped my surveys as I was getting into the wetland. I guess if I, I think I, I recorded data even in places where I couldn't quite get to. The last three were uh, all cattails and then two of all reed canary grass. That seems reasonable. Uh, of course, if you wanted to truth this, you'd have to have a, a high resolution GPS device to record exactly where you are. Uh, phones are actually pretty good at that these days. 
So if you really, really wanted to convey to somebody where you had been, I think this is the most accurate we can do. Uh, top of the ridge on the eastern side, down to the full-on standing water through some areas that are defined wetlands. And so this would uh, summarize for somebody where we have been. So a few different ways you can put the background image on there, kind of get your bearings. Uh, a couple different ways you can draw on your um, image. I've shown you Inkscape and GIMP, kind of whatever works for you. Lots of options uh, should be all free to you as well.